Oh no, it's the blasters that I think everybody needs in their collection special. <laughs> specials on this channel and that's mainly because it's kind of hard to come up with video topics to do specials on. I mean I've kind of covered most there is to cover about the nerfing hobby and until you get into the really nitty gritty stuff. But what about collections that just don't feel complete without one or two particular blasters? This is a topic that everybody seems to know but no one ever really talks about. What about those bucket list blasters that every collection seemingly has or needs? What are those blasters? Well, let's take a look at the blasters that I personally think every nerfer should have at least one of in their collection. This is not to specifically say that these are the best blasters on the market, but just ones that have proven themselves to be worth buying over the years and have repeatedly come back because of just how good they were perceived. So let's get started. First off, we have the OG, the long shot, and this is not counting the Icon one, get an older one like this one. The long shot is a nugget and a half, and it's been around for years and years. It came out just one year after I was born, and this blaster has absolutely stood up the test of time, and has proven itself to be one of the most legendary blasters on the market. It's as simple as you can possibly get it. It's a big blaster, and it's single shot, it's bolt action, it's comfy as hell, and it just works very well. And that is not even counting the absurd amount of modifications that you can do to this and people have done to this over the years. Just looking at it as a stock blaster, the long shot's great. Mine isn't all together these days, but I plan on doing something fun to this as I did with the judge and, well, the lawbringer over here, which is kind of out of frame. I'm making a video on this, which I will probably post next week, but don't worry about that. Oh, uh, it didn't go in the hole properly. But yeah, the long shot. It also has an adjustable stock. Just cuz. Why not? The adjustable stock holds a magazine. Just cuz. Why not? Our next entry is one that everybody saw coming. The Strife. I think everybody needs a Strife. Even if you don't like it as much as everybody else seems to, the Strife is just generally a good blaster. It's comfy, it's efficient, it's fun, it's moddable, it looks pretty cool, and it works very well for what it's trying to do. Not to mention, it's the size of a pistol. You can't really go wrong with the Strife unless you objectify the stupid attachment points, which I did in my review because it's kind of my job to bring up all the annoyances blasters have. But if you just look at it from a basic standpoint and look at the blaster for what it is, its price to value ratio, and just the way that it is, the way that it works, you really can't go wrong with this blaster, and has become insanely popular over the years just because of how well it was pulled off. And I still think that the Strife is worth every penny you spend on it to this this day. Even though the Modulus one isn't as happy as the original Elite one, it still works for you. It's still a strife. The next one is another one you probably saw coming. I mean, most of the blasters on this video you saw coming, but the Maverick or the Disruptor or the Strongarm. I don't have a Strongarm anymore because I gave it to Phase 1 Foam, but I do have these two and they are both fantastic sidearms. This one is fantastic because that is just so cool. That is cool. I love the fact that it breaks, and it has one particular feature about it that I just can't get enough of even after filming the review. This one is more efficient, though it doesn't have that fun break action feature, but it does basically the same thing, and this one has slam fire. The trigger isn't even remotely as fun, though, so that is one particular downside. But these sidearms are magnificent, and there's a reason that Nerf has continued to make them so similarly for so long. This design works, it's been proven, and it just works so well, and I seriously think that anybody watching this video that has a nerf collection should have a sidearm like this in their collection even if it's not one of these two if it's the strong arm or maybe maybe even the raptor slash thing that one in the dino squad series or any of them a six shot revolver pistol like this i, I would recommend this one in particular because it's just oh, it's so i need to shut up you get the point my next entry is the first unconventional one, the one that y'all might not be expecting, the Elite 2.0 Trio. This is the first Elite 2.0 release blaster that I genuinely thought and still think to this day is actually a true improvement over the original Triad. The Triad was fine, but it had so many smart AR issues that I could never recommend it to anybody, and I went through two of them. This one on my first try ended up being a way better version of the Triad, with one unfortunate caveat being how far the darts actually stick out of the barrel. 
Other than that one annoying little detail, everything else about the trio is an improvement over the triad, including, and I'm not making this up, the modability. The, the Elite 2.0 one is more moddable than the original Elite one because on the original Elite Triad, you would have to drill a hole in the back of the shell to access the screw to open the plunger tube. This one, you can pop the clips open to open the blaster and the plunger tube is right there. No drilling required. And even as just like a stock little three shot emergency pistol that you can easily slip into pockets, it does the job pretty well. Well, I say easily, but I'm clearly struggling here because these stupid pockets are too small. It just does the job very well. It works for what you're trying to do, and it even gives you some fun little details like attack rail and two sling points. No one asked for that, but they put them in anyway just because they felt like it. My next recommendation is similar but different to the trio. It is the reflex. Not the jolt, the reflex. And that is because this blaster is like a jolt, but way better than the jolt on a physical level. You can modify this easier than you can modify a jolt, and it honestly just looks better. It fits in the pockets a little bit easier because it's not such a weird shape, it's just a square, and it's got a big comfy priming handle and a spring return that works very well, as well as the fact that the plunger tube is exposed on the back so you can change the spring out without even having to open the blaster at all. That's kind of a big deal. Now, I know people are gonna disagree with me because the jolt is just way more popular, but I truly think that everybody should have one of these in their collection. I reviewed this blaster a long time ago and I still use it as my emergency pistol every single time I nerf. I love this thing. I think this thing is criminally underrated and I think everybody should have one in their collection. Give it some love. The reflex ain't bad. If Nerf decides to get their act put together, then I would say the Warden, but traditionally I would say the Rough Cut, because the Rough Cut is just a fantastic little shotgun, except I've had a terrible experience with the Rough Cut, and I've actually had a way better experience with this one, but nobody else seems to have had the same experience I've had with this one, so I can't say this one, so I have to say the Rough Cut, and I don't know what to say! <laughs> But this is basically the same thing as the Rough Cut, and if the Optimus Prime Warden is better than the original Elite 2.0 Warden, which means it's not going to randomly break for no reason, then I can recommend it instead of the Rough Cut, because this is honestly an upgrade over the Rough Cut, but I digress. I've reviewed this before, and I honestly should get to it again, because I do have some things to say, but you get the point. The Rough Cut. It's an awesome little shotgun, and I do think that everybody should have one in their collection because it's an awesome little shotgun, and it's one of the cheapest, most convenient shotguns you can get your hands on to nerf with. Next we have an extremely recent entry, the Elite 2.0 Double Punch. It's not really easy for people to accept this yet, but I can immediately tell that this is going to become one of the most well-known and popular blasters on the planet, not just because the trigger pull is super smooth, but because it's doing something that we've never seen in such an accessible package in the Nerf hobby, and it does it better than I've ever seen it done before. This blaster is absolutely phenomenal and for the same price that you could pick the Strife up for on Amazon. Seriously, the double punch is so good that I can't recommend it enough right now. It's, it's not even out yet in some places and I'm here telling you just how good it is. That should say something, because usually when a blaster comes out, I give it time for people to actually get their hands on it. And no, 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 no. The, du the double punch is my baby. It's my baby. Next up, we have the Alpha Trooper. And this is an original yellow Alpha Trooper. I had an Accu Trooper for a while, but I also gave that to Phase 1 Foam. This blaster... Oh. I can't wait to do a review on this, and then I can't wait to modify the crap out of it to make it better. But the Alpha Trooper is an amazing, phenomenal blaster, no matter which one you get. The original N-Strike one has some jamming issues from everything I've heard from what I've experienced. Yeah, it jams sometimes, but the Elite versions of the Alpha Trooper and the uh, Active Strike version of the Alpha Trooper fix those jamming issues. Uh, after using this priming, oh, it's so good. I would honestly recommend getting the Elite or the Elite XD Alpha Trooper. Probably the Elite XD one, just because that's the easiest to find. If you do end up getting an AccuStrike Accu Trooper, that's fine, but you might have to give it a spring upgrade because for some reason Walmart likes to do this to it. And then that's how they sell it because they're freaking stupid. And on that note, we move on to the Retaliator or the Delta Trooper, not the Echo, never the Echo. This one or the Retaliator. Probably the Retaliator just because you can do more mods to it, but I am happy with this one just the way that it is. It's basically the same thing as the Alpha Trooper that I just showed you, except this one has a top prime instead. 
Also, the Retaliator does not have Slam Fire. This one does have Slam Fire, which makes it a little bit more friendly for me to play with. Plus, I just love the way this blaster looks. You don't need me to tell you why everybody should have a Retaliator or one of these. These blasters are amazing. The Retaliator is amazing. There are so many mod kits you can do for it, and it's such a cheap, affordable, small, compact blaster. This one doesn't have as many mods for it, primarily because it's a little bit more annoying to work with than the Retaliator. But still, there's a lot of things you can do with this. And again, out of the box, the blasters are just fine. I think everybody should have one of these. We're getting close to the end of the video, and now we've got a hammer shot. Except this doesn't look like a hammer shot, but trust me, it is a hammer shot. It's modified, and I'm still working on it, but I'll get to a video on this eventually. The hammer shot is just... Oh, it's, it's so good. Look at this. It's a dream come true. But it is a five-shot hammer action, dual-wieldable blaster that's just... It's so comfortable. You can fit it in a holster. It's... It's so good. It's just so good. I honestly don't have anything to say about the hammer shot. It is just a legendary little pistol, just like the Maverick or just like the Strongarm or just like the Disruptor. It is legendary. Everybody knows what it is and everybody knows why you should get one. We're finally on to the last blaster. You can kind of already tell what it is. You can see it here on the shelf. It's obviously the Nerf Ultra Wood. It shoots 25 darts up to 120 feet with pinpoint accuracy. The darts are brand new and they're innovative, featuring an innovative flight tip and arrow fin technology. You can buy it at your local Walmart for just $49.95. Get a load of this rub up time. The Ultra One is not the last blaster in this video. It is the Rapid Strike! Everybody loves the Rapid Strike, and everybody knows why you should buy a Rapid Strike. Not just because it is the best flywheel fully automatic blaster on the planet, which it, it isn't. It isn't. But it looks amazing, it's very comfortable, the stock is the perfect length, it just works so well, and there's a million bajillion quadrillion quadrillion mod kits for it. It's just... Oh, the Rapid Strike is so good, and I think that this blaster really has its place in everyone's collection. It just sucks that it's so hard to find now. Why would they discontinue this one? Why? And with that said, I've basically gone over everything you need to make the world's best nerf collection. I don't have a few of the blasters in this video, but it doesn't really matter. I'm happy with my nerf collection anyways, and I don't really feel the need to get any more blasters to add to the ever-increasing pile of stuff in this room. I really need to do something about all of it. But yeah, if you did enjoy this video or have your own suggestions for blasters that everybody should have at least one of, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.